guys, in today's video, we're talking about nursery rhymes. So let's get going. Our first two activity ideas you can do with Old MacDonald. The first one is to print out shapes on a sheet of paper, take farm animals, and let them outline the shapes to start practicing what each of the shapes look like. The second activity is to practice making the letter shapes using these same farm animals. You'll want to have examples of what the letters look like, and then they can make those letters with the animals the best way they can. The next activity is an itsy bitsy spider matching game. For this matching game, I made cards with the pictures from the itsy bitsy spider rhyme. Now, as you can see, mine were a little bit see-through through the paper, so you will want to use thicker paper that you can't see through, but the kids can play a matching game with the symbols of the itsy bitsy spider nursery rhyme. Now I use Canva for all of my worksheets that I make. The next activity is for Hey Diddle Diddle. For this one you're going to have all the pictures that go with the rhyme. The children are going to listen to you say the rhyme and try and match the pictures up that go together. So as you say the rhyme, Hey Diddle Diddle, the cat and the fiddle, they will find the cat and the fiddle and put them together and then you'll continue on through the rhyme. You can do this as slowly as you need to to help the children find the matching pieces. All right, so the next is for row, row, row your boat. This is a great activity for counting practice. I took a piece of poster board and created a stream on the poster board. And I also printed out a bunch of little boats. The children will take a die and roll it on the poster board. And then depending on what number they roll, they will place that many boats on the stream. And this can be repeated over and over to practice those counting skills. All right, let's talk about the nursery rhyme Little Bo Peep. The first activity is to take sheep and draw a lot of different shapes on the sheep. You'll hide them around the room and the children will go and find a shape, bring it back to you and tell you what that shape is. You can hide as many or as few as you want around the room and they can do it either together or you can send one child at a time to find a shape, share it with their class and tell them what the shape is. The second activity for Little Bo Peep is to have a sheet of paper with sticky notes on it. You're going to write letters on those sticky notes and then you'll hide a small sheep under one of the notes. This is great for letter and or number recognition if you'd rather do numbers. The children will have to tell you what letter they want to look under and you'll show them whether or not they found the sheep that was hiding. All right, this little piggy went to the market. For this activity, you're going to print out four sheets of paper. You'll have a market, a piece of meat or roast beef, a pig, and a house. You're going to hide a little pig under one of these sheets of paper and the children are going to have to run up turn a piece of paper over and see if they found the pig. If they don't find it, they have to run back home saying wee 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 all the way home. If they do find it, they win and you get to play the game again. And one bonus activity is to have a Jack and Jill bucket relay. For this activity, you're going to have buckets spread out and the children can run and fill up each bucket with water. You can either do it as a relay or just work as a team to fill the bucket up with water. My first idea is to print out the letters E-I-E-I-O for Old MacDonald and then print out small animals that they can use to trace those letters. You're going to print out one letter per page and then the children are going to glue the animals onto the letters. The next art project is for Itsy Bitsy Spider. For this one, you're going to cut the body shape of a spider out of a piece of cardboard and then hole punch where you want the legs to go. Each kid will take their pipe cleaners, thread them through the hole, and make legs on a spider. This is not only great for an art project, but also for fine motor skills. The next project is an Itsy Bitsy Spider art book. You're going to have the book already printed out with some things on the page. You're going to need two spouts, a circle, and some clouds. For each page, the children are going to add something to the page. The first page is going to have a spider drawn. The second page is going to have raindrops drawn on the page, sunbeams, and the fourth will have a spider again. Once the book's done, you're going to staple it together and they'll have a fun itsy bitsy spider book that they can take home and read. The next one is a Hey Diddle Diddle Cow and Moon. Each child will get a paper plate and they will paint a moon onto the plate. Now you might want to have an example set out of kind of what you want your moon to look like. And once that's done and dropped, you're going to have the children glue a cow onto a popsicle stick 
and you will stick the popsicle stick into the center of the plate so the cow can move around and jump over the moon. The next is a Little Bo Peep sheep made with popcorn. For this one, you're going to have popcorn already popped. The children can take the popcorn and glue it onto the sheep to give it kind of a fluffy fur look. For the older kids, they can do their own gluing and practice that as well. A fun art project for Jack and Jill is to get little tin buckets and let the kids paint with the bucket. They can either paint just with the bottom or they can paint with the top and bottom to give you different size circles as well. And lastly, I made an I'm a little teapot puzzle. I printed out a teapot using Canva and colored it and then cut it into different pieces. You might have to have an example if it's a little confusing for the kids to find what pieces go where, but they can glue the pieces onto a sheet of paper in the correct places. All right, for your home center, I have two ideas. The first one is to bring a tea set for I'm a little teapot and have that in your home center for them to play with. If you wanted to, you could give them water to play tea party with as well. Secondly, for this little piggy went to the market, you could set up a market with a cash register, play money, and stuffed pigs. For your block center, you could do a three little pig section where you have blocks for bricks, twigs, and some crinkle paper for straw. They can practice trying to build houses out of the three different items. The next idea for a block center could also be used for sensory if you wanted it to be, but you're going to take black or gray Play-Doh and you're going to give them pipe cleaners to make spiders with. If you wanted to, you could also add googly eyes to this center idea as well. For your reading center, I have a couple book suggestions that you could put into your reading center. The book suggestions are Barney's favorite Mother Goose Rhymes, the Wheels on the Bus by Jane Cabrera, and The Itsy Bitsy Spider by Isa Trapani. And lastly, for your writing center, I have three ideas for you. The first one for I'm a Little Teapot is to write the words associated with the teapot. So you're going to want one already finished that the kids can copy from, and then you're going to want one with blank spaces that they can practice writing those words. While they probably cannot read those words, this is just great for fine motor and practicing writing those letters. The next one is a name recognition activity. You're going to have oars for row, row, row your boat, and you're going to write the letters of their name on those oars. Mine were a little dark, so you might want to print them out in like a lighter colored gray, or even just have an outline of an oar. You're going to write the letters of their name, and they're going to try and put them in order. And lastly is a letter sequencing or number sequencing activity for Jack and Jill. For this, you're going to find a coloring sheet, or I use Canva to create a hill with a well on top, and then I have buckets with letters written on them, and they want to put the letters in the correct order. You can make smaller buckets even and do more letters on the hill if you'd like. And the last idea is to create an old McDonald's sensory tub with crinkle paper that looks like hay, and then put farm animals in there for them to play with. If you have a barn, you could also put this into the center as well. And again, adding scoops and buckets as well to make it a little more fun. And if you liked this video and want to see more preschool ideas, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.